well, it's like 100 degrees today. Don't really feel like working on anything. So, uh, figure we'll make a video about the Corolla. Uh, I built this thing back in 2018. It was, uh, Kind of its second variation and it'll never really stop changing so i uh, figure we'll take a minute go over some of the parts that are on it and the build and some of the history of it Starting with the chassis, uh, this is a 1981 Toyota Corolla Wagon Deluxe. Uh, very uncommon, but it's actually a Woody. That brown stripe down the side, really hard to still recognize, but that was a wood grain applique. Uh, DX wagon, so chrome taillights, chrome door handles. Uh, she had air conditioning, five-speed trans. Um, this was originally Equipped with the single rectangle headlights. I did the dual quads. Uh, very ghetto. All Taiwanese junk in the front. Bumper is all Taiwan JDM. Chin spoiler is actually narrowed in the middle. Four inches. Uh, I had it on an old X7 Cressida. Um, so she's seen a lot of abuse. This has hit many cones on a drift car Toyota Cressida. That is actually, the tow hook is my front bumper bolt. It's, uh, I believe that's an SR20 connecting rod. This is actually a 240 turn signal lens. Not even remotely installed correctly. That one's a A86 USDM. Um, when I did the quads, I didn't buy a quad grill. I actually narrowed the square front headlight. So I have the straight bar grill the quad bezels they don't really line up but it's a, a unique look truth be told patina really isn't my style um, I really appreciate patina I really appreciate the story it tells of the life of a vehicle uh, issue is the term rat rod grosses me out people intentionally rusting parts uh, everything on this vehicle is as it has naturally aged through its lifespan. Um, I didn't do the primer over the rust. Previous owner did that to try to stop it. Um, back here, this is actually a genuine JDM wagon rear. It's seen a lot of love. Uh, it was on my buddy's car when it got wrecked and the police used this back bumper to push his car out of the road. I think that's another SR20 connecting rod. Back here, similar story. Uh, previous owner, I don't know what they were doing. There's some Bondo in the quarter, primer, sand it all down. No idea what this red paint is. Quarter is original, it was not replaced, so I don't know. I don't know. Fenders have been severely massaged to clear the wheels. Rears are 14 by 10. Uh, I believe it works out to like negative 12 offset. Um, worked pretty high up into the arches to get them out here. Full interior. Um, you know, did the gutted thing plenty of times in my life. Not really where I'm at these days. Front wheels are 14 by eight. I believe right around negative 12 offset. Um, 185, 55, 14 front tires, 185, 60, 14 rear. Suspending the 
Douglas Stealth 14 by eights. Uh, had a buddy who was actually a vendor for these DGRs. He was able to get me custom spring rates way back in the day. Uh, 7K front A86 DGR Taiwanese coilovers. They worked with me to get custom front and rear spring rates for the 86 though, so I was happy with it. Uh, the motor is a 20 valve, 4AG, out of a late model front wheel drive Corolla. Um, high compression, factory ITBs. Came to be because I had a 16 valve small port in my A86 that I wrecked. Um, and originally that motor did get swapped into this car. Truth be told, looks a lot cooler than the 20 valve. But the 16 valve was running on Mega Squirt. One day the Mega Squirt board decided it wanted to no longer pick up a clean RPM reference source. And uh, the car sat. And I got on trade this 20 valve from a good friend. Um, got very lucky. I ended up with really nice custom harness. This T3 waterline kit. Um, several other bits and pieces from another friend um really this car just it wanted to exist apparently because there's no way i should have been as lucky as i was on some of the stuff that i got distributors in the factory location firewalls beat back igniter coils down here not as easy to work on as the distributor relocations but cleaner looking to me. I really hate the look of coil on plug because you lose this and this is not a pretty engine on its own. So uh, more than likely it'll stay like this for the foreseeable future. Really, you see a lot of this really bad rot uh, on the doors, mostly just the doors. Um, a little under the original battery tray. Ironically, it's all quite superficial the floor pans are perfect the rockers are perfect the pinch welds before I started working on this car were perfect and the frame rails are perfect there's no extra holes anywhere other than exterior panels uh, inside it's all this original carpet looks pretty bad but it's it's better than bare metal moon eyes dash mat over the obviously absolutely destroyed factory dash um, <sighs> some just part store gauges oil pressure and water temp um, the heat does work this was originally an AC car I did make the AC work before I pulled the 3TC out old Sun Pro tack and the very Spartan OEM gauge cluster uh, all works except for the speedo drive and the t50 actually took a dump so i do no longer have a speedo moon eyes wheel i've had this thing in four cars since 2013 2012 um somehow it's just stuck around they're kind of ugly but there are five inch front door speakers in each door Five and a halfs in the rear, just a cheap Bluetooth head unit. Got this fun bubble knob. Uh, mismatched floor mats. My buddy Israel from Ismats makes these checkered mats. They're pretty great, fit everything. Once again, that mat's probably been in four different, three different vehicles. Uh, this, I died a little bit inside when I found it at the junkyard. Uh, fits the color scheme of this car a little better. This is a A86 radio console, A86 shifter console. It's actually JDM. Uh, so from the driver's seat, this is kind of inconvenient because it opens and blocks the cup holder. Uh, the e-brake used to work, um, but it is disconnected now. I have a Willwood disc set up in the rear and no longer using the drum brakes. 
These seats are generic, like, Volkswagen dune buggy seats. They look cool. They are incredibly uncomfortable. The driver's side is mounted to a buddy club seat rail for an A86. The passenger side is just on homemade mounts. Back here in the hatch, we couldn't be bothered to go online and buy new hood struts so we just throw the nail in there props it right on up uh, over here normally I have a full-size spare mounted to this uh, this little net is for carrying odds and ends like a water dish for my dog when I take him places uh, typically this side has its full interior also playing around with some fuel tank hoses trying to get uh, it to vent better to the atmosphere uh, I get notes like this when I park it on hot days. Thanks, Afro Swagon, uh, for caring. Um, unfortunately, the tank, when it gets hot, fuel expands and it comes out of the filler neck and leaves a big puddle behind the car. So, uh, here this is a two and a half liter, just cheap Amazon surge tank. Got a Walboro 255 inside the factory gas tank, uh, lifting up to fill that. The tank fills and then feeds a inline 255 on the frame rail that pushes up towards the front. Uh, this is overflow back down into the tank. This box of apples is actually a sub box. There's a 12 inch sub in there, more Mexican blanket. So, overall, just a real fun cruiser. Um, she's run a, a drift event and a few, you know, street shenanigans, but mostly it's just a cruiser. One great thing uh, that worked out in my favor, so this car, it was listed on Marketplace. Um, I was looking just for, I was actually looking for a Toyota pickup. I wanted to reshell a lot of my 8.6 stuff into a Toyota pickup, drifted a little, but mostly just have a cool 4AG powered, you know, corner carver, early Toyota truck. Um, came across this on Marketplace. It was listed for parts, $160 or $150 for the listing. Uh, I messaged asking how much they wanted for the whole car and they said $150. I didn't want a wagon. Um, but I wasn't gonna argue with that price, so I loaded up the truck and uh, actually loaded up my buddy's truck. He took me out and we picked it up. Uh, ended up paying $160 because I got cash back from the grocery store and it came out in 20s. Um, guy came out, brought me the title. He was gonna get me $10 change and I just told him not to worry about it. But while it was listed uh, for parts, someone actually came out and bought the roof rack, which, is a huge blessing for me because I would have felt terrible taking the roof rack off and I absolutely despise roof racks. So the fact that it's gone makes me happy. The car was way down in middle South Georgia. Uh, honestly can't remember the name, but uh, their local elementary school up until recent was called Robert E. Lee Elementary. Um, so you can imagine the part of town we were in. So this is actually Calvin pissing on the interim Georgia flag from when they first took the rebel flag off of the Georgia state flag. It's just the blue flag with the seal. Um, <laughs> yep. And his Confederate soldier's hat, uh, over here, this piece of history, I can't possibly take off. I'll let it live. For as long as it wants to. Robert E. Lee Rebels was the football team for the school. Uh, down here, this used to be one of those cheap gas station stickers that said 73% uh, redneck and the rest beer, which I'll agree with those numbers. Pretty accurate. Uh, the problem is half of that sticker was a rebel flag and uh, I live in the city now work in the city and really there's just 
no place for the rebel flag in 2022. So, uh, yeah, I just left the important part, beer. Exhaust is a, I think, Imgo motorcycle muffler uh, from the six, yeah, probably 70s. Uh, cherry bomb ahead of it and a mismatch of parts that is actually from Junkyard. My buddy built for a Toyota Corona back in the day and I scavenged the front half of this exhaust from him. Uh, the header was actually a TRD unit. Uh, it's for a 16 valve that I modified for the 20 valve. And you know, gotta chuck up them deuces. So, one of the reasons I didn't want a wagon uh, was because the rear, instead of being five length, like the A86 or the sedan or coupe, uh, the wagons are leaf sprung. Um, not so good for performance, but uh, they are cool for lowering. Um, on this, I did modify the leaf pack a little bit to get four inches of drop. Uh, additionally running a two inch block uh, homemade traction bars and I do typically run a pan hard bar um, unfortunately I did not brace the chassis enough for the pan hard bar so it did tear so I don't have it in currently uh, does work wonders for preventing the wheel hop that the leaf springs are so bad about um, also helps dial your fitment from one side to the other because actually this side has more axle poke than the other side. Fun fact. So one fun thing with dealing with old cars is worn parts uh, that aren't necessarily easy to find or buy anymore. Uh, one thing that drove me absolutely nuts when I bought this car was when I drove it in the rain, this wiper arm was dragging on the cowl so bad that it was constantly making a squeaking noise. And rather than, you know, buy a used part after finding one, I just made this silly PVC bushing that makes it quiet. And uh, cut this vinyl so it looks like a headlight cover for a Sev Marshall light, obviously. Anyway, y'all, hope you liked uh, me showing you around the parole a little bit. Uh, thanks for watching.